So, we already done our lesson how to install Jupyter Notebook and Python in previous video. In this section, you will learn how to use Jupyter Notebook as our main platform of writing computer program. At first, we are going to open Anaconda Navigator. After that, we will open the Jupyter Notebook from Anaconda Navigator. There are many ways to open Jupyter Notebook. One of the way is open it through Anaconda Navigator, the distribution software that we already installed in previous video. Now, look for the Anaconda Navigator icon in your computer and click it to open the program. Once it is completely loaded, the Navigator will open the main dashboard and showing list of install and pre-install IDE, including Jupyter Notebook. Make sure the button for the Jupyter Notebook here showing launch status that indicate the selected IDE is completely installed in your system. If the button here showing install status, for example like this, it means it is not fully installed. Click the button to complete the installation process. Now, let us open the Jupyter Notebook program by clicking the launch button below this Jupyter Notebook icon. Then, a new window of your terminal or common prompt will pop up. It will take a few seconds to open your default web browser, which is the main interface of Jupyter Notebook. Do not close this window because it is a way of the IDE program communicate with the Python interpreter using kernel. For your information, the latest version of Jupyter Notebook does not require kernel to run using terminal or command prompt. As mentioned in previous lesson, Jupyter Notebook program will run using your default web browser. This is Jupyter Notebook main dashboard. What we see here are all the folders and files in default directory. If we click one of the folder, for example, desktop folder, that means we are going inside that folder directory. To create new folder inside the desktop directory, click the new button and select folder. By default, the folder will be named as untitled folder. Check the box beside the folder and click rename button here to rename the folder. Let's rename it as my folder. When you go to your desktop, you can see the folder that you already created appear here. However, it is not necessary to create the folder using Jupyter Notebook. You can directly create the folder from your desktop. Okay, now what we want to do is to create a notebook editing file inside my folder. Click my folder and to create the file Go to the new button here and then select Python 3. Your browser will immediately open a new tab and this is the interactive shell that later use to type your code. To ensure that you already create the Jupyter Notebook file, go to the previous main dashboard tab and you can see here the file that you already created. By default, the name of that file is untitled with the extension IPYNB. If you go to your desktop and look for your My Folder, you also can find the file that you already created available over here. Now, let's back to the notebook interface that you just created before. We want to rename the file by clicking the text box beside the Jupyter logo on the top left 
and the editable pop-up windows will appear. Change the name untitled into any name, for example, my first code to rename the notebook file. If you go to your main dashboard, you found that your Jupyter Notebook file already been renamed. Okay, now we are ready to explore how to code in Jupyter Notebook shell. This field called cell, and each cell containing input and output cell. The cell with text box that is in line with the IN prefix is called input cell. It is a place for you to type your code. If the color shown here is blue, then the selected cell is in command mode. Move your mouse cursor and click anywhere inside the text field of the input cell. The cell color shown here will turn into green, means that you are in edit mode. Then you can start typing your code here. Now, let's try write a simple Python code. Let's say x equal to 1 and then press enter to add a new line in the same cell and type x to invoke the output. To run this input cell, click the run button here. Another way to run the cell is by using shortcut key by holding the shift button and press enter. Get yourself familiar of using this shortcut because it is very convenient to run the cell instead of moving your mouse to click the run button. As you can see here, after you running the cell, the same number will appear in both square bracket of the same field. It indicates that the input cell is completely run. If there is no error message, then all the codes written in the cell are considered successfully run. This number in the square bracket represents the sequence of the code running by the cell. Try run the same cell one more time and you will see the number will increase. The cell in line with the out prefix here is called output cell and it is used to show the output after running the input cell. The output will appear here if only the code contains action to show the result as what we done before. This section showing the status of the selected cell. By default, the status of the cell is in code mode. In code mode, you can type the code and execute it. Sometimes, we want to use the cell not for writing code, but to write some notes and describe about the code, and no need to be executed when we run the cell. In order to make this happen, we can change the status of the cell from code into markdown mode by clicking this selection menu. In markdown mode, anything you write in the input cell will not be executed. The prefix in with square bracket also will not appear. Now, let's type my first program in this cell and run it. So, select this cell again and move it using a select the cell again and use the upward button here to move the cell on top of the previous cell. Just double click the cell if you want to edit the content inside your markdown cell. Try to learn a few commands how to control the text inside the markdown cell. For example, you can apply pound symbol to control the size of the text. Run the cell again to make it work. To add a new cell, it is better to use the shortcut key which is more convenient and faster. If you want to add new cell on top of the current selected cell, press A button. To add new cell below the selected cell, press B button. 
To delete the selected cell, press D button twice at your keyboard. To undo the delete action, go to the edit and select undo delete cells. If you accidentally delete the text in the cell, you can use command Ctrl Z to undo the action. One of advantages of using Jupyter Notebook as your IDE is you can easily run your code by cell without running other cell. By having this feature, we can solve problem in peace and save computation time. If you want to reset all codes in your notebook file, click kernel button here and choose restart and clear output. Or you can choose any other selection based on your needs. Use stop button here to interrupt the progress while running the cell. For other feature in Jupyter Notebook, we are going to explore them when we put real action of writing program throughout this course. See you in the next video lesson.